Hi, welcome. Uh, if you try to join us a little bit earlier, sorry about the audio. You know, this is our first live stream and um, it didn't go so well the first time. So hopefully you made it back. You saw the post um, there uh, that I put up in uh, the uh, Facebook against the post there, the original to get here. Anyway, uh, so we're going to try this again, or maybe you're seeing it for the first time. At any rate, my name is Clay, and welcome to Musical Listening. Welcome to my first live stream here on the channel. And I've chosen to talk about, checking the chat window here, uh, perpetual motion. You know, let me know what you think of this piece. What, where is this piece for you in the, in, in the repertoire of what you're teaching? Are you teaching cello? Are you an orchestra teacher? Uh, if you're watching this on the replay, uh, put it down in the, uh, in the comments there. Uh, where are you watching from? Um, so this piece here is very, excuse me, very uh, special to me uh, because it is a, a piece that I start students on so often uh, when they're at this level. So if a student comes to me and you know maybe they're we should start you know they, they have a lot of facilities so we start at the beginning of book two or maybe we start at in the middle of book two or uh, maybe we're even starting in book three but what has been missing from their uh, technique uh, from their development is this loose wrist over here and it's so important for so many things not just for playing fast I mean we want them to be able to do it um, so that they can play fast notes all right. <laughs> motion there um, but when you gain this ability to to loosen up this wrist and fingers the other thing that, <clears throat> the other thing that happens excuse me is that you gain independence or your wrist and your hand gains independence from the rest of your arm okay and this independence is what allows you to get the weight into the string all right when this is all functioning as one unit as one thing here, all right, um, then I'm liable to lift the bow off the string or have lots of tension, all right, and this affects the tone, all right. So this action here isn't just about going fast, it's about just having a better sound, all right, being able to get the weight of the arm into the bow, into the string correctly, all right, for a better tone. And the other thing that it affects a lot, it's a really big deal, excuse me, um, is of course legato playing all right so when I'm going to change the bow I want to have a nice loose wrist and fingers and again it all has to be independent excuse me I'm gonna take a drink of water all right and you can do the same um, my Six Flags cup here all right from Six Flags which of course we didn't get to do this year I miss my students all right so I'm drinking out of my Six Flags cup for good luck all right so here we go. So where do we start? And you can start with this with uh, individual private students. You can start with a class. It's actually a lot of fun in class. I do this with sixth graders and we start and I just have them, you know, make this motion. All right. And I say something very specific to them. <clears throat> you know, there's lots of images that come to mind that you can use. Um, like, you know, this is a floppy fish or maybe you have another one. But the one that's my favorite that works every time across the board, it's foolproof is I tell them to high-five the wall. You know, high-five the wall behind them like this. And as soon as I do that, as you can see, I'm, I'm almost there practically to the bowing motion. All I have to do is high-five, you know, if I say high-five the wall, okay, now high-five the wall in the lane of the bowing, and look, I'm, I'm halfway there, all right, making this motion, all right, and of course they think this is completely silly and it's a lot of fun, all right. But I'll get all you know. I'll get all sorts of variations if I just tell them to 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 flap their wrist. And also notice as soon as I say high five the wall, you got to get your arm up, right? You got to get this elbow up as well. This is a big one, you know, for getting this wrist to move. All right, is supporting the hand with the arm. And if you're high fiving the wall, it's all there. All right, I'm just getting them to loosen up. All right, and remember this motion now. Putting the hand on the bow and the string. All right. The next thing that I would have them do is uh, try to make this motion on the string, make a sound, 
all right, and still just moving, okay, the wrist and fingers. Of course, you want to really start all this on the scale. exactly know what's going to happen in the fall with our classes uh, but hopefully we will all be back together again uh, and you will see students in person so this next one you know kind of depends uh, as far as right now hopefully you're watching this on a replay and we are back with students and that's awesome and so you can just use this right away uh, but two things if they're having trouble with this moving this hand you know loosening up this wrist and fingers here you know having a student hold the bow all right with their hand and going over and grabbing the bow and telling you know you have to tell the student I'm gonna pull the bow because as soon as the bow starts to move students want to move the bow with you because that's I mean that's what they're there to do they're there to play and that's just their natural inclination all right because they they love to play all right so you have to tell them hold on all right just hold on but don't move the bow and as you move the bow or somebody else moves the bow for them this all right if this is holding on and all this is doing nothing this wrist, okay, has to loosen up. Almost always. And you, when you're pulling the bow back and forth, all right, you can tell if they're gripping tight or trying to move the bow themselves. You can feel when they're holding on the bow and the hand is really loose, all right? And so you try to go around and do this with as many students as you can. And of course, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, you can do it. But you can have the students, all right, as long as we're in a better situation here, you can have the students do this for each other, all right, and take turns with their stand partner. One person holding the bow, okay, and the other right, moving like this, all right. The other thing they could do, all right, just holding very lightly, and you can do this one, all right, since we are all social distancing here, anybody can do this for themselves, or a parent could do this for them at home, or a sibling, is just hold his arm just to make you aware, okay, of any movement or motion that might be going on and just so that you can isolate this motion here because as soon as you make yourself aware or somebody else makes you aware all right of this movement you can start to trying to loosen up this all right feel this loose wrist okay and fingers on the bow there all right then of course next we want to try doing this on a scale you know the longer I do this the earlier I start with the scale work before we get to the piece so like right now I have a student you know and I know that scherzo is coming up in book three at some point and uh, we're still back almost done with book two or a couple of pieces left from the, uh, the the end of book two and we've already finished doing our scale work of <laughs> getting up the scale there into that fourth position all right with all of the doubles and this should be the first thing that happens so it doesn't matter where you start right tempo of understanding is what we want a tempo where we can wrap our heads around what we're doing <laughs> D major scale, right? Because perpetual motion is just the notes of the D major scale. And then gradually speeding that up. So we can just think about this. All right, remember we're focused on this. Let me say something about that. I know we're very focused. I know you have to get coordinated with the left hand. And we're focused today here in this 
uh, video about the right hand, but maybe in a future one we'll talk a little bit more about putting it with the left hand. But just getting faster here. And all of the repeated notes, all right, is so that you can stay coordinated ho over here with the left hand. <laughs> to full speed with your max number of repeated notes. This should be the first goal, okay? And this is something, you know, you know, the students coming to me in sixth grade, thank goodness for the elementary teachers, all right, they all know their D major scale, and it's something we can start with immediately. Um, and this is also important because the violins need maybe a little time to learn it in D major, okay, on their own. Uh, you know, with your classroom set of uh, Suzuki books, you can just pass it out to the cellos, violas, and basses. They all have it in D major. Of course, violins in A major, all right? So um, if they've never learned it, you know, having them learn it in A major and then having them play it down a string, or if they already know it, you know, giving them some time also to learn it to play down a string, which is something we do with perpetual motion anyway. It's great to do that with perpetual motion, all right? But the scale work, all right, while you're giving violins a little time at home to do that, because I have to do almost nothing, you know, well, I have to put no, but my left hand is not moving very much at all, okay, it's all happening over here, right, and then of course I want to start cutting that in half, and maybe you even start cutting it in half at a lower speed before you get to full speed, which you can totally do, right. And then I want to be working toward. So I'm changing the left hand sooner. And then, of course, cutting it in half again here. Once again, and then also speeding it up. Eventually, I get to the two sixteenth notes, which is what we have. Okay, in perpetual motion. Now, you also have to remind students because they'll have trouble with this. All right, going really, really fast with the. Remind them that the left hand is still playing eighth notes. do this it seems like a little light bulb goes off where they realize oh yeah my left hand over here actually isn't moving that fast and this is just making the same motion all right I can do this all right and I can go bum, 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 bum. all right and there's a realization that it's not just about being quick it's not just about going fast it's about coordination right it's about this other thing that isn't just about some you know unattainable speed all right it's about putting these two things together like a jigsaw puzzle, all right, which isn't necessarily about speed. It's very affected by speed, all right, but it's not about speed itself, all right. It's about getting them together at the same time, all right. So you got to remind them of that by, all right, and then going back to, all right, and then asking them to put them together, the scale which is our goal and of course if you can add an arpeggio in there very important all right then it becomes even more like the piece when you're playing the double so doing that scale work all right even before you get to the perpetual motion uh, very 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 important all right if you guys have any comments questions uh, put them down there I would love to answer them even if you're watching this on the replay put it down there um, and tell me what you do with scales uh, to prepare students to play like this. Uh, there's so many variations of scales, especially for getting this loosened up. All right. And I also want to say one other thing about playing uh, just the eighth notes, actually, and doing this prep. Yes. You know, maybe you're also, while you're doing the scale work, you're learning the perpetual motion, all right? Violins have got it down in D major. <laughs> they are playing the eighth notes okay to exaggerate this motion all right to try to loosen it up remember you're just trying
trying to end the gridlock, to get them to have some independence over here so they can have a better tone, so they can play more legato, right? And so they can play fast. <laughs> some extra doubles in the perpetual motion. <laughs> actually still playing the melody but really moving this hand along all right um, other things that you can do with uh, perpetual motion uh, to get this and obviously we're going to focus on the right hand but uh, a really fun thing that a lot of teachers do of course is variations uh, on this and some of these variations really help this idea for instance uh, playing triplets all right because you have this you end up with this reverse bowing pattern all right and so it's going to get this, you know, these muscles and this action going here in all sorts of directions. <laughs> you can do to also help all right loosen up this hand loosen up these fingers all right I'm using my cheat sheet here uh, to see if there's anything that I have left out uh, talking about this uh, right hand troubleshooting okay troubleshooting if a student is having trouble you know really struggling with this you'll have to reinforce this again hopefully when all of our pandemic uh, mess is over all right, you may have to go back and remind them several times, all right, by moving the bow for them, all right, or having them on their own if you're doing distance learning, having them hold this arm over here, all right, not too hard, or having someone do it for them. Constantly remind them of this independent action, just, all right, just hand and fingers, all right, and not letting this move with them. Um, another troubleshooting thing is just have them go faster, and I'll tell you why. Um, you might have a student like I did that is uh, works very hard, is very talented, very into the cello, all right, plays very well, um, and just gets things done. That will get this up to tempo, all right, get it up to 140, like we want, or even faster, and play it in tune and up to speed without loosening up this wrist. Okay, I've seen it happen. All right, so the answer for them is just to go faster. Right, make them go a tempo that forces this wrist and fingers to loosen up. All right, make them go 150, 160, or however fast they can go. All right, um, and and do it well. That will 
make them loosen this up, all right? Um, another thing is maybe uh, their hand just isn't strong enough, all right, for the fingers and the hand to be independent. A little bow game you can play, and I love doing this in class, of course you have to remind everybody, all right, not to throw the bows, is to have a race here, all right, and move the bow, I'm grabbing on the other side with my pinky, I don't know if that's cheating, all right? And then also, of course, everybody wants to just throw the bow up into the air and win. <clears throat> All right, but moving this thing. All right, with just your fingers. Not putting in the palm, that's cheating. All right, to get these fingers, all right, nice and strong. Okay, a little exercise that you can do. Um, and some of you have exercises uh, for that. Uh, yeah, let us know down in the chat, down in the comments there, uh, if there's something you guys do in class, all right, to exercise this hand, or what you do with your private students. Okay, that's it, all right, until next time, all right, thanks for watching. Um, if you got something out of this, uh, hit the like button, think about subscribing, we have lots of great videos just like this one on this channel, and uh, we'll have more live streams here in the future. Um, uh, especially in the near future here from uh, Cello Book One. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.